Hi, I'm Adil Fattah and welcome to this series of videos. These videos are part of your consent process, which includes the consultation with me, the written information I gave you in the clinic, and the letters in the post. These videos are generic and an aid of memoir, so feel free to watch them as many times as you like, jot down any questions you have, and I'll go through them with you in the clinic at our next appointment. If you're not one of my patients, these videos do not constitute independent medical advice and shouldn't really be used outside of the context of a consultation with me. Either way, I hope you find these videos interesting and informative. Lower lip blepharoplasty. This is a lower eyelid tuck. This surgery is very beneficial, but at the same time carries with it significant risks and is not one to be undertaken lightly. The idea behind this surgery is to remove the skin or fat from the lower eyelid to restore the contour between the cheek and the eyelid itself, particularly trying to re reduce the groove called the tear trough between the cheek and the eyelid. Lower blepharoplasty can be performed through an incision from the inside of the eyelid without a visible scar on the surface. This is only useful if we are removing fat only. If skin needs to be removed, then an incision a millimeter or so below the eyelashes carried out into the laughter lines will need to be performed. And this is... In general, this is performed as a day case procedure under a general anesthetic. I don't perform lower blepharoplasty under a local anesthetic unless it is purely skin removal. After the surgery, you'll have one suture that will be pulled out at day five after your surgery, plus one or two other sutures that are used to align the skin. If you have an incision inside the eyelid, no suture removal is necessary. They're all dissolving. After the surgery, you'll be bruised and swollen and ice packs are recommended to minimize the swelling. You will get swelling after the surgery and that will result in the eyelid hanging low and looking quite uncomfortably scary for a few days after the surgery. This almost always resolves very quickly within the first week. Occasionally it may take longer. In this case I'll be seeing you very regularly through this time to ensure that your eyes are kept safe, lubricated and that things are progressing appropriately. You'll need to wear sunglasses for one to two weeks afterwards to hide the surgery from public gaze. You'll need to take at least two weeks off work if you want to be sure that people don't notice that you've had the surgery to any great extent. Following the surgery your eyelids will feel tight and will animate slightly differently. This is quite normal and you'll get used to this over time as things relax and scar matures. Complications of low lip blepharoplasty. The scar could be visible. Usually it's situated immediately under the eyelashes and heals as a very fine line but sometimes goes through a phase of being red visible and lumpy. It may form a keloid scar, a thick lump of growing scar tissue. I've not seen this in the eyelid, but it could happen, and if it did, you'd require referral to a specialist. Infection occurs in around about 2% of cases. It's very rare for it to require anything more than oral antibiotic tablets to settle down. There is a very rare form of infection called periorbital cellulitis, should this occur, you'd need admission and IV antibiotics through a drip. Bleeding can occur after surgery. This will be manifest as bruising and is quite normal. In some cases, you get very severe bruising and it may even track down the cheeks. Rarely, bleeding can occur within the eye socket. This is called a retrobulbar hematoma. If this bleeding progresses, it could build up pressure on the eyeball itself and this would cause blindness if left unattended to. The risk of a retrobulbar hematoma is in the region of 1 in 2,000. The risk of blindness is in the region of 1 in 22,000. Should you have a retrobulbar hematoma, you'd experience intense pain in the eye, you'd be returning to the hospital, and it can be treated rapidly by opening the incision and releasing the pressure and blood from around the eyeball. Bleeding would then be stopped and everything resutured. Your recovery would be slower, 
with more swelling, bruising and a slower recovery in general. The lower eyelid is very delicate and it's very easy for patients to tighten up the skin and say, oh look all the lines have gone, I think it looks really good like this. But the problem with this is that the eyelid cannot withstand the weight of us taking too much skin away. So if you take too much skin, more than likely we'll pull the eyelid down. So lower lid malposition is a very feared complication of this. Patients that have had lower lid blepharoplasty with a bit too much skin removed can have something called scleral show, where the white of the eyeball between the lid margin and the iris is visible. In very rare cases, ectropion, when the eyelid falls away from the eyeball, can occur. Ectropion would require further intervention to protect the eye itself from drying out and developing what we call ocular surface symptoms. If ectropion occurs and fails to resolve, it may require further surgery. There will be differences between the two sides following surgery in terms of the position, length of the scar, then lines or wrinkles will have moved. And these differences should be within normal limits. They shouldn't be so obvious. However, following surgery, you will know the difference between the two sides and you will pick up on the smallest changes. This is normal and to be expected. No surgery can make the eyelids or any part of the body exactly symmetrical. Following surgery, you may have dry eyes. Before surgery, we'll take a full ophthalmological history to determine whether you have any eye symptoms and send you to an ophthalmologist beforehand to determine whether surgery is safe for you. Should you get dry eyes after the surgery, which is not uncommon for the first few days, you'll be given ointment and eye drops in order to mitigate this. Persistent dry eyes would require referral to an ophthalmologist. There is a risk of double vision after this surgery if damage to the muscles that move the eyeball occur. After lower lip blepharoplasty, you will get a degree of chemosis. That swelling on the eyeball itself, which a patient has referred to as frog spawn. This usually settles on its own within a week or so. It may require eye drops to help it settle. I have heard of surgical intervention being an option. Performing low lip blepharoplasty under general anaesthetic creates a risk of low limb thrombosis or DVT. As a procedure in itself, this is low risk for DVT. Aesthetic complications are the most common complications of any cosmetic surgery. You may think that I've undercorrected the eyelids or overcorrected the eyelids. You may be unhappy with what is technically a good result or it simply may not have achieved your aims. In this day and age when people are taking more photos than ever of themselves, you may find, in fact you will find, that at certain angles, certain lighting or certain photographs taken of you will be unflattering and you don't like this. This is quite normal. Everyone has a good side and a bad side and surgery can never make you look perfect at all angles all the time. 